Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. This is essentially what we will be creating in this tutorial. We will be creating a bit of a list view over here in the top left, which consists of uh, images, some text and a button. And we'll just show how you can easily set that, this up and how the communication works for you to do so. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the list view widget and seeing how that works. So let's get started. To begin with, we are going to be creating a user interface and this will just be a user widget and this will be our uh, general UI which we place all of our stuff inside of. So we'll call it w underscore main UI or something like that. Opening this up, we can then add our uh, list view. We'll do this by adding a canvas just so we have something to relate to. And then we add a list view. A list view is essentially, uh, as if you look at the explanation over here, it's a virtualized list, virtualized list that allows thousands of items to be displayed. Um, essentially what it's doing is it's allowing you to have a very big list where it will be reusing um, the widget places so that it will not be very demanding. So despite having thousands of lists there, only the ones that are actually showing on the screen will be the ones that are loaded in essentially. Uh, that's the easy way of describing it, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, our list view here, now we have it available. Uh, we scroll in on it here, we can see that there is an error that's appearing that says no entry widget class specified on this list. Uh, even if doing custom stuff, this is always required as fallback. What this means is it's complaining that we do not have a setting over here. Down here you can see we have an entry widget class and that is currently set to none. Uh, clicking on it you can see that we have nothing that we can actually add to it. Uh, the reason for this is that it has a requirement on which kind of widgets it will allow. Let's compile for now and go back and create another widget. So we'll create another widget blueprint. We'll make it a user blueprint, user widget. Uh, call it w underscore list view entry. So this will be uh, un representing one item in this list view then. Uh, opening this up. You can see we have currently nothing in here. Going back to our main menu, clicking our list view, we still do not get it as something that appears here because this widget is not fulfilling the requirements. What this widget needs is a interface to be implemented. So we'll go to graph, class settings, and add list. You can see we have something called a user object list entry. Adding this, Compiling, saving, going back to our main menu, we can now see if we open up this dropdown that this is now a widget that is allowed to be used. So we'll use that like so, compile and save. Now that we have a valid list view entry here, we still don't get any information here currently. It's just empty because we need to design the actual list view entry. The list view entry is just like any other widget, just to make it uh, visually understanding. Uh, we'll add a panel in the form of a horizontal box so we can place some items inside of it and let's place a image, uh, text and a button inside of it. So this is what our widget will look like as an entry in the list view. We can click on desired to see what it will actually look like and this is fine for now. We can compile and save. Uh, in our main menu we now want to be able to add this. But first, let's go to our third person character. In this case, we have on the event begin play. Getting the controller, casting it to the player controller we're using in this example of the project. And here we're just going to be creating a widget. The widget will be of the type main UI that we created because we're just going to be showing our main UI and show the list uh, view that's inside of it. And then we're just going to be adding it to viewport. Now, since we don't have any entries in our list view, if we play now, we're going to be having an empty UI. Um, to be able to add some list view entries, we need to go to our main UI and we need to go to our event construct. From here, we are going to be um, 
taking our reference to our list view and then we're going to be dragging out from that and saying add item. You can see here under the list view category we have an add item function. This one takes a list view as a target and an object reference as an item. So this is sort of your input where you can pass information along to the list view. And let's uh, look at our list view entry. Uh, our list view entry, we um, implemented the interface for the, what was it called? I don't even remember the name, the user object list entry, which gives us these four events here. And the one that's most interesting for us right now is the on list item object set. We right click and implement event. You can see that we have an event here that takes an object reference as an input. This is directly matched against the add item. So when you do an add item, this is what's getting fed in. Since this is an object reference, you can send in any type of object here you want to have, anything that derives from object. So an actor or whatever you want to. But since this is how we add the widgets and we don't have any other uh, way of communicating with the widget that we're creating because we're uh, the data of this one the information for the text block for example isn't being fed like when we create a normal create widget uh, that means that this item is most likely going to be used as some sort of data holder for you uh, so just to make this simple we're going to be creating an object for this so we'll go here, right click, create a blueprint class and choose object and then click select. We can call this BP underscore uh, list view uh, data entry, something like that. It's fine. Uh, so this object essentially has nothing inside of it. I have prepared a structure here. I call it a list view data. If you don't know how to create a structure, you can just right click, go to blueprints and structure. Then you'll get this. And then I've added one variable. So I have a text and a more text here. And that's all that this structure contains. This structure we're going to be using in our class we just created now. So we'll add a variable. We call this the data for list view entry. And the type is s underscore list view data is what I called it. So we have that structure here now. Now, the problem here is if we go to our main menu now and we create an object, you create an object by using the node uh, constructs, constructs object, spelling is hard. There, construct object from class. Then we get to choose which class. And here we can choose our BP list view data entry. Uh, now that we created it like this, we can add it to our add item over here. The problem is it's just going to be containing whatever we have as our default values in our widget for list view entry now, because uh, we haven't actually set any values inside of this one. Sorry, the, the default values of the, the this uh, object class here for the data list entry. So to be able to populate this, let's, let's create a function for us to do that. So we'll create our custom event. We call it init for initialization. And let's do this. We get our struct. We drag out. Actually, let's do this. We do a set. Remove this one. Drag from this. Create a make list that exposes our variables. Then we can just drag it into our event easily like this. So this means we're setting our structure now with the inputs that we get from the init. We can now go back to our main UI and instead of this, we can just say we want to call the init function. Like so, we'll move this away a little bit. So the init function over here will take some input. It will add an item to our list view. And to show that this is working, we can just add some data here. So we'll say hello and then uh, more text can be from outer space or something. Now we're still not acting upon these things. We're passing this information through to our widget now, but in our widget over here, we're not doing anything over here. So here we're taking an object reference, but we know that it's of this type. So for simplicity now, we're just going to be casting here. So we're going to cast to BP list view data entry. This will allow us to reach in and get our struct that we have created. So we're going to type in get and go to the bottom and then we get our struct. 
From this we can break this and we get our actual information. Then we can go to our designer and click on our text. Make sure that it's a variable. That way when we go back to the graph we can drag out a reference for it here and say set text on it. Now we can populate this with something. So let's take the text from our more text here and compile, save, and now let's run. And you can see that we get a list item created here in our uh, list view. So that works. Um, so now we essentially have the whole communication here. So it's uh, we're constructing an object just in this case because that's what we're choosing to pass through. We have a, an initialization function just so we can put some information in our object that we want to pass through so that it's prepared for our list view. Then we just call an add item with the object that we want to pass. The list view itself will use the interface event that it has from its interface and then it will somehow make use of that. And in this case we just casted took a structure, took some lines from it, and then put it on the screen. And that's essentially all you need. Um, to make this look a little bit more interesting, we can do something like this. We can create a loop to have some more entries in here. So let's go from 0 to 40. And instead of this, we'll use our index as our actual text in here. Uh, so we create an object for each of these, we initialize it with the index of the loop, we send it to our list and then we populate it. So this is what it looks like now. So you can see that we get this sort of uh, uh, scroll bar here, because this is taking up uh, this much space currently on our screen. So it's taking up that, that much space, so we can just scroll up and down in this list if we wanted to. and click on the corresponding list item that we wanted to interact with or something like that. Uh, if we wanted it to look a little bit bigger, we could also expand it to have certain sizes we wanted and such. Uh, but yeah, in essence, that is how you make use of a list view. Uh, it's maybe a little bit uh, convoluted or problematic to understand uh, to get started, but it's uh, fairly simple once you understand the puzzle pieces that you need to make use of. That's all for now. Keep on learning, take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning, take care.